Season's greetings. What is the limit of one minus x times sine of one over one minus x as x approaches one? This is a pretty good trigonometric limit problem. Your first thought should be, can we evaluate the limit with substitution? Just plug in one for x. That's not gonna work because inside the sine function we have one over one minus x. That's gonna be one over zero if we plug in one for x. So that doesn't work. What about the limit product rule? Could we split this up into the limit of this times the limit of this? If both of those limits exist, then we could, but they don't because what's gonna happen to the sine part as x approaches one? Well, this denominator, one minus x, would approach zero, so what's inside the sine function would be going to infinity, and so the sine function's just gonna be oscillating between one and negative one. Bummer. Okay, so what do we do? Well, let's try a re-expression. Maybe instead of having one over one minus x in the sine function that's kind of messy, I might be able to get a better idea what's going on and evaluate this limit if I give that a simpler name. So let's try doing that. I'm gonna just pick another variable, say theta, and I'm gonna say theta is one over one minus x. But it's not just one over one minus x in my function. I also have one minus x on its own. What's that in terms of theta? Well, if theta is one over one minus x, then by inverting both sides of this equation, we see one over theta is one minus x. So I could express both of these pieces now in terms of theta. I just need to know what theta should be approaching if I'm going to rewrite this limit. So as x approaches one, what's happening to theta? Well, let's write it out and see. The limit of theta as x approaches one is what? Well, it depends. Theta is one over one minus x. So if x is approaching one from the left, then one minus x is gonna be a really small positive number. And so one over one minus x, which is theta, is going to be approaching positive infinity one over a really tiny positive number, that's going to positive infinity. On the other hand, if x is approaching one from the right, then one minus x is gonna be a really small negative number, and so theta is going to be going to negative infinity. Man, so it seems like it just gets worse, but have no fear. Let's go through with it re-expressing this limit in terms of theta, and we'll see that this complication ends up being sorted out pretty easily. Since I'm gonna re-express it in terms of theta, but theta has different limits, depending on whether x is approaching one from the left or the right, I'm gonna have to evaluate those limits from the left and right separately. And if they're both equal and they exist, then that is gonna be the limit of my function. So again, we have to treat approaching one from the left and the right separately if we're gonna break this down in terms of theta, since theta behaves differently depending on how x is approaching one. Let's do it. We'll start with this part. So let's consider the limit as x approaches one from the left of our function, one minus x, times sine of one over one minus x. Now, if we're approaching one from the left, we can rewrite this limit in terms of theta. So let's do that. This is the limit as theta approaches, well, if x is approaching one from the left, theta is approaching positive infinity. So the limit as theta approaches positive infinity of one minus x, which is one over theta, multiplied by sine of one over one minus x. One over one minus x is just theta, so that is sine of theta.
Now look at this function for a second and think about what you would expect to happen as theta goes to infinity. Do you have an idea what this limit is going to be now? It looks to me like this limit should be zero because sine of theta with theta going to infinity is just going to oscillate but one over theta is going to be approaching zero. And so I think that this limit's going to be zero. But how can we prove it? Well, I'm going to try to use the squeeze theorem because I know that sine of theta is squeezed between one and negative one. So since that's between one and negative one and this is going to zero, the limit should be zero and I'm going to use squeeze to prove it. So for starters, let me say what I said again. We know that say, uh, sine of theta is between one and negative one. That's how sine works. It's gonna turn out though to be really useful here to just use absolute value instead of sine of theta by itself. So I'm gonna take the absolute value of sine of theta. If sine of theta is between one and negative one, then the absolute value of sine of theta is between one and zero. Since sine of theta never gets more than one away from zero, so its absolute values between zero and one. Now, one of the reasons I know absolute value isn't gonna cause me a problem here is because I suspect the function's limit is zero. And if the absolute value of a function has a limit of zero, then the original function also has a limit of zero. So if I end up proving something about the absolute value of this function and its limit is zero, then I can just apply that back to the original function. Okay, so right now I have the absolute value of sine of theta. Of course, the function I'm interested in also has a multiplication by one over theta. So I want something like that here too. To get that, I'm gonna divide everything by the absolute value of theta. So on the left, if I divide by the absolute value of theta, I just still have zero. Then in the middle, I've got the absolute value of sine theta over theta. And on the right, I've got one over the absolute value of theta. We know the absolute value of theta isn't zero because theta is approaching infinity. So it's way past zero. Now we've got the absolute value of our function sine of theta divided by theta and it's squeezed between zero and one over the absolute value of theta. Now if the limits of the things on the left and the right are the same, then by the squeeze theorem, we know that the thing in the middle must have the same limit. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on the squeeze theorem. Also, let me mention the absolute value thing again. If the absolute value of our function, which is what we've got here, if the absolute value of the function has a limit of zero, that limit is also applicable to the original function. It doesn't always work that way. It only works for limits of zero. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that absolute value limit fact. So let's now evaluate the limits of the things on the left and right so we can finish using the squeeze theorem. On the left, nice and simple, what's the limit of zero as theta approaches infinity? Well, zero is just a constant, it's zero. So of course the limit is zero as well. On the right, we have one over the absolute value of theta. What's the limit of that as theta approaches infinity? Well, this is just gonna be one divided by a really big number since theta's going to infinity. So the limit, of course, is gonna be zero. Look at that. So I've got the absolute value of sine of theta over theta squeezed between two things that are approaching zero. The limits on the left and right are zero. So the limit of the thing in the middle as theta approaches infinity has to be zero too by the squeeze theorem. Let me write it. So by the squeeze theorem, I know that the absolute value of my function must also have a limit of zero as theta goes to infinity. But because the absolute value of the function has a limit of zero, 
The function itself originally, without the absolute value, must also have a limit of zero. And so I'll write that there. So now we know the limit of this original function as x approaches one from the left, that is equal to zero. Now what about what's gonna happen as x approaches one from the right? Well here, our absolute value does a lot of work. If x approaches one from the right, we could go through this same process, except theta, of course, would be approaching negative infinity. But all of these lines of work would still be correct because we introduced the absolute value. So no weird stuff is gonna happen with theta going to negative infinity because the negatives don't even come into play. We've got absolute values going on here. So you could use the squeeze theorem again when theta is approaching negative infinity to show that the limit of our function as x approaches one from the right is also zero and so the limit as a whole is equal to zero. And I encourage you to try to write out that other part of the proof where x is approaching one from the right. Again, it's just this exact same thing. Since we use the absolute value, you've just gotta have theta approaching negative infinity, which turns out to be an immaterial difference. So that's it. The limit of one minus x times sine of one over one minus x as x approaches one is zero. Pretty solid problem. Let me know if you have any questions.